Patty and Roger Philp have set aside the gardening and the shopping this weekend. In their 50s, they've booked up for a course in tantric sex. We were born before the wind. Also younger than the sun. Yeah, the bonnie boat was one as we sail into the mystic. Cassie and Roger have been married for 18 years. They've had their rocky patches, but both say the relationship is strong. Yet something they agree is missing. The sexual side of marriage, the, the relationship that way is, is not uh, is non-existent. Is it? It's just something that happens, I think, as you get older anyway. You don't get together that way for a week or so, and that expands to a month or so, and that expands again. And before you know it, you've forgotten. You've forgotten what it's like. So it was then that we began to think, well, hang on a minute, is there more to this? Kathy admits to feeling nervous about what the Tantra weekend holds. You've got to take massage oil, a blanket to lie on, and my brain's working overtime. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> what, what am I doing? I mean, I'm in the 50s. Do I want this? But there's a little part of me that says, yes, you, you've got to try for this. You've got to find out if there's more. I'm reassured by what uh, John, the chap that's uh, running the course, has told us that it's not an orgy we're going to. <laughs> but it's, it, it, it's a finding out about each other and learning how to do the things that perhaps we're not able to do. For example, Kathy has very great difficulty in looking me in the eye. Now, that's something that she's got to get to and come to terms with. Tantra is an ancient Indian philosophy. Sex is revered as a sacred life energy. Though there's no explicit sexual activity, this beginner's weekend is designed to waken Roger and Kathy's sensuality. The Tantra is about sex in its pure form, which is about our basic life energy, our basic sen sensitivity, our liveliness. Part of the journey of that is to take sex away from only being genital and to reconnect sexual energy with the heart. What we offer is a completely different way of looking at sexuality. It's people who are in search of their soul, really, who come on the course. And so a lot of it is about recovering the parts of us that have been deadened by our condition, by our upbringing. I grew up on the council estates in Bristol, quite a poor upbringing. Went into the Navy, probably to get away from, from home a little bit. I suppose my background was almost diametrically opposite to Cathy's. Idyllic childhood on the north coast of Cornwall. Sheltered upbringing, Cornish Methodist, went into the banking profession. Both had earlier failed marriages. They met when Roger put an advert in the personal columns for a partner to go with him to the bank's annual dinner dance. He was quite handsome in those days. He had lovely curly hair. <laughs> he was gentle, he was kind. It wasn't what I was used to. Oh, she was attractive. Wow. Real eye-opener. Terrific. And um, I suppose, first of all, it was a case of she looked good with me when we were out, which totally the wrong reason, isn't it? But then, just like Kathy with me, I found the deeper sign. He was electric, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. And sex was, was brilliant. That's where the first of the I remember <laughs> <laughs> um, a very light, late night walk on the cliffs in oh, uh, Cornwall. Yes, yes, yes. And it was horseplay at first, and then one thing led to another. And we were having a great old time, weren't we? On a, sexual, yeah. On, yeah. on a sexual level, on a cliff. And the next morning, when we walked along the path and I looked at where we'd been, I thought, my God, we could have killed ourselves. <laughs> But all that disappears. I mean, you, you, you've got to live this life, you know, yeah. and life is hard. 
Roger was made redundant from the bank. A business venture into the pub trade failed. The years went by and they moved to Brixham. You put on weight and you get wrinkles and all the other stuff creeps into it, which again affects you, your togetherness, because you, suddenly you're seeing each other through different eyes. I don't. I just see the 20-year-old brother that I know. No, I don't see any wrinkles. Uh, yeah, I know physically they're there, but the same face is shining through to me that appealed to me the first time I met. Even in myself, I see the spare tire, but in you, <laughs> I don't see any wrinkles. But although they share a deep companionship, little by little, that electricity has seeped out of their sex life. When we had the baby, of course, there was the difficulties. But I don't know, it just sort of dwindled away, it just disappeared. For me, it doesn't disappear, and Kathy, being the kind person that she is, tends to consider it a bit of a duty. So that's how it is. Well, it's okay, but it's not. You know, something's missing. A spark. Mm. Are you ever tempted to look outside the marriage for sexual Fine satisfaction? <laughs> yeah. Naturally, it has occurred to me. I feel slightly cheated. But the cost would be just too great. You can't play about. I think most couples go through it. I know I've heard some people say that, that their, their sexual life as they get older is marvelous, it's better than it's ever been. But I think for the majority of people, it becomes mundane. It becomes something that you just do as a matter of course, as a matter of part of your marriage. Sex is often seen as kind of the reward for the hardship of everyday life. So you, you spend all day in the office and you come home and you, know, you deserve it Saturday night, that's a traditional night for sex. So. You deserve a treat. And Tantra teaches that sexuality is part of life. So it's looking for the erotic energy in every moment. And it's not limited to making love. In the Tantric description, the man has his positive pole, his giving pole in his sex. And his negative, his receptive pole in his heart. And the woman receives, yeah, and she gives from her heart. Now, most men have problems around this bit, because in our society it's normal. As a man, you're identified with, okay, you give from here, you, you know, you know about this. But actually being a man with an open heart and receives in his heart, well, there's not many examples of that. I mean, Clint Eastwood doesn't know. <laughs> And for the woman, she's constantly giving from the heart, but doesn't actually receive so much from here. So she's constantly So giving. she's giving, and he's not receiving here. And she doesn't feel seen. This is how men and women usually miss each other in our society. So we're giving and giving. Putting tons of energy oh. into this relationship. Oh. She's not receiving me. Oh. And there's so much effort. Oh, I, I just can't feel you. Well, I'm just giving. Can't you feel how I'm giving? Yeah, but I'm giving. You know, giving. you're just not interested in sex. You're not a real woman. And the connection, the intimacy, is if I actually receive what she gives, as she gives it, which is this moment. This is what's scary. But it's this cycle of energy that joins, not only man and woman, but joins sex and heart inside you. So what you're getting stuck here is you're sticking at her sex. Yeah, you can. Go through her sex to reach her heart. Upwards. Yeah. Try that way. You keep the eye contact. Really seeing each other. 